the recording. Oh, good. Before you guys get started, I just want to say too as a shout out, uh, thank you, Heidi, for uh, putting that together. I was finally able to attend the virtual showcase this year and it was a blast. Yay, oh, I'm so glad. So I hope you will share some of your experiences too as, as we talk about strategies. Are we are we going now? Are you on? Is it? Am I on? Okay, awesome. So, uh, I'm sure we're all aware. Like as we're younger, we use our imagination a lot. We we're creative. Before people got here, we were just talking about some of the crazy ways we use our creativity and imagination. But um, obviously, we go to school. We learn a set of rules. Some of us become very good at being students and so forth. Um, but I think many people are aware and have experienced that we lose some of our creativity. And, uh, you know, this is something that is important to both Heidi and myself and a lot of our faculty is maintaining creativity. So what we're going to talk about today is um, why it's important to use creative approaches and encourage creative writing in other disciplines than just English. And we're going to talk about the Southern Word Showcase and demonstrate how that can be a, a, a viable tool for you to use uh, in your teaching. Uh, because ultimately, when we go to our goal, I'm going to look at this next slide here. We're not just providing knowledge, we're also providing experiences. And I like the way this writer worded this, that it's a mosaic of knowledge and experiences. It's a creative kind of collection of knowledge and experiences. So our students can respond creatively to life's challenges. And uh, Heidi's gonna talk a little bit about Southern Word here. Um, so we have opportunities for students to um, engage in events that uh, will let them uh, share their creative writing and give them a platform to share that creative writing. Um, and we do that in our partnership with Southern Word. So there are two events um, that we do every academic year. We've been doing this since fall 2018. Um, we've done it every fall. Uh, the fall we have uh, a student showcase, which is um, a little more open. It um, invites all student writers uh, to perform. And we have um, a spring writer slam, which is a competition. Um, so it's really similar to the showcase. Um, the uh, the biggest difference is that there are time limits and a few different rules to make sure that people fit into, um, into that competition. And we have a panel of judges. We've had, um, Dr. Jackson has been one of our judges at one of our slams, but um, we have a lot of people um, involved um, in, in those. These events are um, a collaboration um, between Southern Word, which is a, um, an arts <laughs> nonprofit um, that's based in Nashville. Um, they bring spoken word into classrooms in order to help students um, build confidence and, and develop their voice. Um, so, so these events are collaborations with Southern Word, um, Dean Armstrong, the English department and um, student life. And so I wanna give you um, a taste of what these um, events are like. Um, we've done them in two different formats. We've done um, an in-person format, which you'll see Kiana here um, at the microphone. Uh, our last in-person slam had 175 attendees. So they're well-attended events. Um, during the pandemic, we've moved these to virtual um, platforms and the, this uh, writer slam this semester will be um, virtual as well. So I'm gonna give you a little taste of what that experience is like. This, what you're going to see is um, the winner of last semester's, or, or I'm sorry, last spring's writer slam. Um, and I want you to also pay attention to what's going on in the chat. Thank you, thank you. We snap, we snap, we snap. 
we snap. Look at the chat. Literal chills. Super powerful. Rivers were chasing. Love it. Goosebumps. Sex. That was so amazing. I love it. I love it. I love it. Fantastic. Beloved, beloved, be loved, be loved. Thank you. Over moving across the mountains you've made out of your insecurity and uncertainty and self-loathing and see the whole picture, it turns out this landscape of your life is lovely after all. And all right, so um, I'm just gonna give you a taste of it for now. I have um, a link to that full video. Um, it's hyperlinked to this picture here. I encourage you to um, take a look. But what I hope you notice is that this is really an interactive event. It's really um, engaging. Um, you'll, you see faculty, you see students, you see administrators um, in that chat. And we really want your students to be a part of this if they're not already. Sorry, I muted myself. All right, here we go. So just a reminder from our earlier slide, the mosaic, uh, the goal of good education is knowledge and experiences. So we're gonna talk about particularly the experiences provided by writing. And I'm gonna talk about uh, how we can, I have some examples both for STEM and health sciences. So if we can go to the next slide. You say, why writing? You think about why do we want our students to write? Uh, it aids in the construction and synthesis of knowledge. And it goes beyond actual writing skills. And I think this is sometimes an overlooked benefit of writing or an aspect of writing that, you know, even amongst our students is this sense of like, why am I taking a writing class if I'm going to be a nurse? So that's why writing is important. Can we go to the next slide, please, Hyde? However, most traditional writing is kind of dry, term papers, short essays, case studies, um, and creative writing is rarely used, particularly within disciplines that lean toward mathematical modeling and theorizing. Uh, they believe it can't be applied and also that they can't assess it. So if we go to our next slide, When we develop creative skills and creative writing skills, we have flexibility in our problem solving skills and in stating those ideas. And obviously the best idea isn't valuable if it can't be stated in a way that uh, is understood, but also problem solving is at the heart of critical thinking uh, in any discipline. If we go to our next slide, uh, when we learn, when we teach our students to write creatively and they learn to write creatively, it helps them frame questions. Questions are verbal representations of, of concepts that aren't understood and ways to understand them. Um, it also helps students recognize what to apply to solve problems. And it really gets to that core of like, particularly in math, I used to teach math way back when, Teaching a formula versus teaching how to use a formula are two very, very different things. But I like this last part the most, I think, um, explaining surprising or unexpected results. That requires creativity. Um, if a student gets a result from a lab that doesn't, you know, isn't predictable or isn't what is predicted, uh, how do they explain that? Do they discard it as an anomaly or do they think about it creatively? So if we go to our next slide here. Okay, so another reason creative writing and particularly the Southern word approach is it's not focused as much on grammar and uh, it reminds people uh, directly if we do it, but indirectly that uh, expression of ideas and concepts communicating uh, often is in the real world, so to speak, isn't the English world or it's not the science world. Um, it's a reminder that the idea and the rationale for the assignment is not to check for your commas and your semicolons. Okay, and there's another benefit to that if we go to our next slide. Uh, a 1999 survey, as you can see on your screen. Um, I'm sure you've heard that 
a number one skill that employers are looking for is communication. And this is a great example of being able to shift audience. Uh, when people learn to write creatively, they also become aware of different ways to communicate rather than just sort of academic speak. And that helps them communicate with their clients. So we go to our next slide. So we think about STEM in particular. Um, when students write about the formulas, these procedures, et cetera, um, it gives the brain a different way to process that information, uh, different storage mo modality. It illuminates patterns for the, grain, the brain. Um, I'll share just a brief anecdote. I started, I was an engineering major and I first encountered college, excuse me, calculus in college. Uh, I went to a pretty poor high school. So I was behind and I really kind of was buried in all the formulas and so forth. And interestingly enough, it was in a snowstorm. I had kind of my Newton moment, my Newton as, as in Sir Isaac Newton moment. And just kind of watching the snowfall and processing it, like suddenly the whole distance formula, S equals one half AT squared plus a BT plus a constant made sense. And I conceptualized what an integral was and what a derivative was uh, that I never would have gotten the classroom if I hadn't thought about it creatively. So if we go to our next slide, writing can illuminate sequential procedures the students need to learn. Um, writing gives us a way to process information present it in a creative way, particularly when we're creative in our way. And it really helps with our understanding. So if we move on here, another concern with STEM is that uh, employees go out into the workforce with current skills and they're very, very quickly become outdated. And what they're seeing in STEM and tracking earnings is that STEM graduates make a lot at the beginning but if they can't adapt, their learnings, earnings level off and many end up leaving the field because they don't have those creative skills required to adapt. Uh, using one of my brothers as an example, um, you know, he often, when we talk, he often talks about younger programmers and how it's like he, like how I never would have thought to program it that way. And it's like, because his brain's in an older programming language. Um, it's hard to stay current, it's hard to adapt, and he continues taking classes, but ultimately he's gone into something that's more management driven, which is good, is where he should be at this point in his career. So if we move on, thinking about health professions, um, I can't say it any better than these people did. Um, being able to observe and describe is an essential part of writing any kind of chart, is an essential part of communicating when shifts change and healthcare professionals need to communicate information quickly and efficiently to the new shift. Uh, so moving on. Um, communication is extraordinarily important as we've mentioned. Um, so noting again, this changing role from student into healthcare professional is this idea of being able to adapt and learn new things um, and these soft skills are very, very important. Um, if we go to the next slide, it mentions empathy. And um, they give a couple examples here, reflecting with patients on their stories, analyzing characters from the literature, and writing stories from the patient's perspective. Um, these are ways to develop the compassion that I mean, obviously we're talking about healthcare professions, but this is good for all of us as human beings, not just you know in our jobs, the ability to empathize. But particularly in the healthcare professions, uh, studies have shown that whether or not a, a doctor is sued for malpractice has to do with how the patient perceives the doctor more than what the doctor actually does. So doctors who have good bedside manner, who communicate with their patients, who can, you know, all that stuff, they're less likely to get sued for malpractice. So there's a very real financial element to that. Uh, if we go to our next slide. So um, it's also this idea of like how to cope. And we talked a lot about compassion fatigue 
as a school and we had a presentation on Wednesday, we talked about compassion fatigue. Um, if you think about like the frustrations we experience as teachers and the, and the emotional highs and lows that we experience, um, you think about being a healthcare professional where you know, you're, you're dealing with death, um, you're dealing with re some real highs and lows there, you can see where creative writing could be very valuable in terms of developing that ability to be compassionate with yourself and with others. And then with that, going to our next slide here, um, being able to express those things helps us emotionally process. And obviously when we don't process our emotions, uh, and this again goes back to some of what we talked or heard on Wednesday, this idea if we keep pushing it down and pushing it down, we burn out, we get depressed. And uh, going to our next slide, just a reminder, what we said earlier, the goal of a good college education is knowledge and experiences. So with that in mind, I'm going to turn it back over to Heidi, and she's going to talk about this experience of Southern Word. Thanks, Harlan. So as you see, there are lots of benefits um, in incorporating creative writing in um, any, any discipline. So how do we get students uh, involved? We wanna share some uh, of our tips with you and we wanna invite you to share your strategies as well. So hopefully you all leave here with um, ways that you can incorporate creative writing and ways that you can get your students excited about the writer slam. Um, tip one, give students opportunities to test the creative writing waters in your classes. Um, this is uh, important. I, I use creative writing in composition and writing support um, in two major ways. Um, one way is to help them generate ideas um, and the second way is to um, help mitigate stress, to, to lessen the writing anxiety, because so many students come in thinking, I can't write, or um, you know, they have all of these bad prior experiences with writing, and they see creative writing as a kind of play. So um, I embrace that. Um, so uh, I so th there are a few different ways that I do this. Um, I, you could use a, a metaphor or an analogy to explain a concept in class. Um, we talk about the writing process a lot. That's um, one of our course objectives is, um, is practicing the writing process. So at the beginning of the semester, I have students um, write an extended metaphor about, or an analogy about what the writing process looks like. And we post these. Um, so it serves a, a couple of different purposes. One, it, it allows them to think about what their writing process is like. And usually we get to talk about, you know, how messy that process is and um, how it, it often um, comes with a lot of doubt and insecurity in the process. And so students get a chance to see that all of them feel very similarly um, about writing. One student said that writing, her writing process was like walking her dog. It's always distracted by other things. Um, another student said her writing process was like Dory from um, Finding Nemo, and she just had to say, keep writing, you know, keep swimming, keep swimming. Um, so you could use a metaphor, an analogy to get students thinking about um, things in a different way. Um, you could get students to explain something from a, a different perspective. When we do research, and um, especially when we talk about um, issues that have multiple viewpoints, um, I ask students to write a, a, a dialogue, imagine a debate between you and someone who disagrees with this idea, or imagine um, a Facebook debate. What would that, what would that look like? Just to think about, get them thinking about how to anticipate their audience's questions. 
And um, the other thing that I do is I invite Southern Word into my classes. Um, and I'm sharing um, this with you because um, this is open to all of you as well. If you are interested in having Southern Word come to your class and do a poetry workshop with your students, um, just email me and, and I will connect you with them. These poetry workshops, um, I think of as almost like an active rest for my students. Um, it allows someone else to come in to the classroom and um, share with them lots of different uh, writing strategies and uh, playful writing strategies. By the end of class, they have a longer piece that they have written and they're invited to share. And I'm always um, surprised by the number of students who want to share um, uh, their writing, especially some of the more personal writing. Um, so I've had a lot of good uh, experience with that and I'm happy to um, connect you with Southern Word so that uh, you can invite them into your classes as well. So I want you to think about these um, strategies in the context of your own class. And I'm gonna give you some time to reflect on this and then we'll share ideas with each other. So think about one objective you have in one of your classes. Um, one thing that you wanna get students to learn, or maybe it's something that, you, um, that students struggle with every semester in your class. What's one thing? And then how could you, how could students write about that topic or concept from a different perspective? Um, some examples of that to just get you thinking, maybe they could observe something from someone else's perspective, an imagined person's, fictional person's perspective. Um, maybe they could write an imagined debate between two theorists that you're learning about or two historical figures that they're learning about. Um, maybe they explain a concept or um, a lesson like photosynthesis to two different audiences, have them explain it to a child versus um, someone who's majoring in, in the sciences. Um, but I'm going to give you uh, just a couple of minutes to reflect on your own. Um, and then after a couple of minutes, uh, I'll invite you to either unmute and share or add those to the chat so we can hear from everybody. Okay, so let me give you a chance to either add those to the chat or um, unmute yourself and share with us some of the, the creative writing strategies that you use in your classes. Well, I don't know that I've used them in my classes, but <laughs> the idea, um, number three, the explain a concept to two different audiences. I was like, that would be great for our communication classes, especially when we get to public speaking, because we already talk about analyzing your audience and thinking about it from reaching an audience. So just shifting that another step further to actually, well, what if you have a different audience? I, that, I think that'd be a great in-class activity to give um, even maybe a similar topic and then have them pair up and 
Um, but, and it would be super easy to do in class and it's really relevant to something we're already doing. Yeah. I love that. That sounds fun. I, I would, you know, the idea of apology, which we teach in communication is also something that's really difficult. And, uh, I'm, I'm not something I've done, but definitely something I'm going to do is like, what would it feel like to receive your apology, um, as opposed to give it. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Um, and Bridget, thank you for argumentative writing, having students write a paragraph or even list taking the devil's advocate position. Very cool. Um, Amy, when teaching nonverbal communication, I asked students to tell me what nonverbals they would want students to send if they were the teacher. Interesting. Um, for what nonverbals do they want you to send? <laughs> I'm just interested. I will say that as the students, as soon as I ask that question, they all sit up and start acting like they're taking notes. So it really <laughs> tracks yeah. them back in too. They and then I flip it and say, work. what do you want a teacher to send to you non-verbally to make you feel welcome in the classroom? That's awesome. I think, I think this is a great activity. Just like you said at the very beginning, building empathy, um, seeing things from other people's perspectives. And then just maybe one element, like we all have these, we're talking about maybe thinking and putting ourselves in someone else's shoes. But a, a lot of times, a lot of these different perspectives are already within us. And when I think about what Harlan said at the very beginning, when uh, he, he had another life as a math teacher and he was an engineering major, he's a songwriter, he's an English professor, he's a speech, writer, a speech professor all those perspectives are within him. And then maybe an exercise like this can kind of, when he sees, views something from all these different perspectives and kind of fostering that in our students, this is just real exciting. I love that, Dave. Um, we've also got Jessica Rabb get students to design an advertisement or flyer for a species in a biology class. Very cool. Bridget had another one here. I've had a students take um, a family member's perspective to imagine a different perspective of a personal experience. Um, do we get some others? Those are great ideas. Um, devil advocates approach from uh, the view of a population that needs these resources. Um, these are fantastic. What test questions would you include on a test for the concepts covered in class today? Yeah, um, so these are great. So yeah, think about, think about what um, we do in class to get students um, engaged in creative writing. Um, but tip two, uh, remind them about the writer's slam. Talk to them about the writer's slam. Um, and so the writer's slam is, is usually around week 12. I don't have the exact date yet. Um, I should know uh, within the next week or so, and I'll send out that email. Um, we'll get a flyer as well uh, that you'll be able to post in your classes. Um, but you can start talking to them about that and encouraging them to you know, revise something that they've started in class um, or even write something um, specifically for the SLAM on, um, on its own. Robert? Yeah, just to kind of put those two slides together or to connect them together. In my English 1010, which uh, thanks to Heidi, I've been using the embedded writing tutor from Southern Word for, what is it, three, four semesters now? It's hard to remember with COVID. Yeah. Uh, but on our second essays, particularly, um, I like to, when I'm introducing new topics, use the writing tutor uh, to let them introduce themselves to the idea of the topic creatively first. And so for my yeah. second essay, which is all about uh, how they can be a better listener, before I ever even introduce the topic to them, I have uh, w with Southern Word them to write a creative writing piece about a time they felt like they weren't, or they weren't listened to. And so it primes them in this way. It's like, oh yeah, people need to listen better. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, by the way, here's how you could listen better. How could you listen better? And so like once they're already in this mindset where they're like, oh yeah, people need to listen better. It's really hard for them to be like, well, I already listen. Um, and you know, I use that as a way of, then they have to go and interview another student using those principles and making sure that they're not doing those things that they have identified that they do. 
Um, so there's a nice way of like using the creative writing to frame the thing that we're actually talking about. And uh, to speak to the writing slam, uh, I offer uh, extra credit, like she's, uh, Heidi says here, for them to go to that. And a lot of them take, actually this semester took that exact writing assignment to the writing slam or to the uh, different workshops and, and we're uh, using them there. So it's, it's pretty exciting to see how they all connect. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thanks for sharing that, Robert. Um, I, I find this slam, it gives students, so uh, students can share their stories, their personal stories, right? So the audience leaves with all of these different um, perspectives and are able to listen and engage with that. So, um, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, so ways that I use, uh, ways that I talk about writer slam um, in my classes, I tie performing or attending the event to course objectives. So students who um, perform, obviously they're writing something for it, um, but they're also revising, they're getting um, feedback from me or from the, uh, the writer mentor, also encourage them to work with, uh, work with the tutors. So they're meeting um, some of those course objectives. Um, they're also writing for a specific purpose in a live audience. Um, so it's often more motivating for them than if they just think that their class is going to be hearing them or, um, or just the teacher reading something. Um, they've got to perform and, and perform to their peers. Um, we also talk about target versus um, um, secondary audience or unintentional audience. Um, I had a student last semester who is, um, she's 72 years old, and she wrote um, a poem about her experience returning to college as a 72 year old. And um, she performed in the, slant, in the showcase and Dr. Jackson was in the audience. And after the showcase, she said, I need to talk to this student. I, I need to hear more of her story. Um, so it showed students that, you know, there are other people listening other than who they're, um, who they're targeting or that primary audience. For students who attend, I just emphasize the importance of um, connecting with their community and I uh, talk to them about how to engage in the chat and how to um, be aware of who's reading that, that chat and how they're contributing um, to the energy of the, of the event. And it, um, I find that the students who attend often come out of that feeling more confident about their writing as well, um, which I, I think is, um, is a testament to that, that sense of belonging and sense of, of community. And yes, I give them I give them lots of extra credit for um, for attending and participating, and um, encourage them to do that. Um, so my next reflection, um, if if you'll just post your strategies in the the chat, we'll just we'll just do it that way. Um, how can you connect participation in the writer slam to your class? So um, if you, uh, Robert just shared um, the assignment that he gives his students um, as a way to, to connect it to the writer slam, what are some other things that people are doing or might be able to do? Okay, so Harlan, it's a great way to connect service learning and public speaking. Yeah, public speaking, we, we talk to students about projecting their voice and uh, engaging with the audience, um, enunciating their words, um, belonging. Um, they can reflect on their experiences uh, in a discussion post. 
Um, I sometimes have students send me selfies of, of at the live events. Um, you can also have them send screenshots if you um, if for a virtual event to just record their their comments if you want to keep track of that. Um, and yeah, Dave, they we've included uh, student music performances, so that's um, a great way to connect with your classes too. Um, and my last tip here is uh, just make examples available for your students. Um, I, I just have a list of resources here. Um, so if you want um, a copy of this slideshow, just let Harlan or me know and we'll be happy to email it out to you. Um, but I have um, a few different things here. Here in a minute, I'm gonna show you the um, the Southern Word at NSCC Lib Guide. Um, the rest of these are different um, performances. Uh, where I'm from, this is uh, Kira Wading, who um, who is the convocation um, the convocation speaker last semester. Um, Ke um, Kiana also has a where I'm from poem. So that's um, a, a template that students might um, be inspired by. Um, I've got a couple of NSCC Writer Slam performers. Um, this is Leslie Garcia was uh, a writer mentor from Southern Word that um, I worked with that I worked with, some of you may have worked with her too, and she performed a poem at uh, Nashville TEDx. Um, Sounds Like and Lost Voices. Sounds Like is a, a poem that students could use as a template as well. What does something sound like? Um, for this student, she talked about what black history sounds like. Um, and then Lost Voices is a collaboration. So students can see how you can even collaborate with someone else on this. Um, so the Southern Word Lib Guide looks like this. Um, it's, I encourage you to um, just link to it in your classes so students have access to it. Um, but you're going to see there's Kiana's where I'm from poem and audio. You're going to see videos from all of our past events. You're also going to see um, pictures, which um, are kind of fun for, for your students to look through too. Uh, but that gives students lots of examples, lots of ways to um, be inspired. Um, these are some student comments from past Southern Word events. Um, these are comments uh, by performers and by audience members. Um, the one that I'm always drawn to is it made me feel like I fit in at NSCC. This was said by an audience member. So um, I, I just want to emphasize the importance of not just performing, but also just attending and being a part of this event as a way to um, promote a sense of belonging in your students. So I'm just going to wrap up with a couple quick thoughts and then we will be happy to take questions. Um, we talk about moments and I think when most people reflect on school, if we think about high school, we probably don't reflect on tests. Um, maybe you reflect on athletic achievements or prom or various firsts that you experience going into adolescence. And uh, we think about a career at Nashville State, if, if, you, if you, as a student, not as, a, not as an employee, um, uh, but if you think about it, you know, students talk about this like checking off the boxes sort of semester marks, these are goals, but um, moments are important and that's how we mark time. Um, if you could advance that, Heidi. Uh, I love this quote, this idea, moments provide the pros of life with punctuation. And for like those students who felt like they were seen I felt like they were heard, that they belonged. That's a great example of something that you can't buy that kind of advertising. You can't buy that kind of word of mouth in terms of engaging students. Um, 
I thought I was doing my presentation next week on moments, but I'm actually doing it on ideas that stick, book by the same author, but the ideas relate. So if I mentioned earlier something about moments, but anyway. And if we go to this last slide, we have a quote from uh, Albert Einstein reminding us as teachers, uh, the art of teaching is to awaken joy and creative expression and knowledge. And I think that's really what this is all about. So we'd like to thank you all for attending and we're gonna stop the recording. And if any of you have any questions, we'd be happy to elaborate and answer. I would just wanna add, um, is it key?